welcome everybody my name's Rose Smith from AbsoluteSoulSecrets.com thank you so much for joining me today I'm here with the Leo March horoscope okay March 2022 by the way <laughs> it's a bit hard to keep up isn't it the time's flying faster and faster all the time now it seems okay we've got some good news there's no retrograding planets uh, this month there's no eclipses there's no sort of major patterns in your chart okay this is a time when we can move forward more unhindered uh, maybe at different times uh, you know before <laughs> here's Prince Harry's just coming in to see me um, he's a big boy and he's just licking me on the feet as I'm trying to concentrate <laughs> anyway uh, so we can move forward now uh, and there's a big surge spiritually speaking uh, without you know sort of the hindrances that we normally have to deal with I'll just briefly explain uh, what I do I like to draw two tarot cards as theme cards for the month for you uh, and uh, then I'll have a look at your horoscope in depth if uh, Harry lets me <laughs> He's now uh, decided that uh, he's going to uh, lay on the board, lay across your horoscope. Uh, uh, and uh, then I'll do a psychic channeling at the end, uh, just whatever comes. So I don't have any preconceived ideas. I never know what I'm going to say. Uh, and uh, if you are new per chance, uh, think about uh, subscribing to this channel and hit that notification bell right now as well. Thank you. I would appreciate that. All right, first thing I'm going to do is uh, draw two tarot cards with Harry's help. And we could even let him uh, choose them, perhaps. If he, No, don't think he wants to. He'd rather just fall asleep on the board. Okay, all right. So the first card or the first half of the month, let's go with that one. And closing my eyes now, uh, what do I see? I get the word can opener, but... I see some sort of machine I can't see I can't tell exactly what it is but can opener uh, do be careful uh, this month uh, that you don't open a can of worms you might be trying to fix a situation but then it's a bit like a Pandora's box once you open it you find there's more and more to do uh, the card that comes up is the page of cups this brings news about your emotions I'm an optimist so I normally think it's good news but you see here's a fish up here and and so it's like opening the door to your subconscious and a whole lot of stuff is going to come out but it is good from the fact that um, uh, you're going to clear out some stuff and uh, you'll be more what would you say unencumbered okay the baggage of the past uh, won't be there on your doorstep to deal with and uh, so you'll be able to move forward um, more easily. Sometimes this indicates a younger person or you could be feeling, you know, when you get these things out in the open, you could be feeling actually more vital or like you've got more energy. There could also be um, a willingness to work hard and get stuff done uh, or maybe an apprentice, somebody, somebody comes into your life who's like an apprentice with new ideas okay so that's really beneficial that's the first card uh, let's have a look now <laughs> give it back <laughs> all right that's the first card and now let's have a look at the second card or the second half of the month do you want to pick one no it's more interested in the door okay I'll pick one um, all right, let's go with that one there because, you know, looking at the door is fascinating. Uh, okay, and closing my eyes now, what do I see? I see a rainbow. Uh, if you've been through a difficult time, that's coming to an end and all of these pretty colours are coming in, you raise, it's like a bit of a detox that you've had. Uh, alternatively, you could be thinking about... Um, you could be thinking about uh, detoxing and improving your health in some way. Uh, and with this card, this suggests tiredness, exhaustion. This is what you need to do. Sort of really look at your health. Uh, you need rest 
and uh, you need rest so you can clean out the past and get ready for the future. Uh, of course, the rainbow could also represent uh, the gay community, uh, if that applies to you. It's brighter than ever, uh, what I'm seeing. It's like I'm looking into the sky and I see the rainbow in the sky and the colours are brighter than ever and bigger. You know, so you might find different areas of your life growing or increasing. But this does suggest uh, a real uh, period of time where you just need to rest. Try not to take too much on. Okay, alrighty, let's bear those in mind. Now I'm just going to make this a bit bigger uh, so that you can see. Alrighty. A couple of things we uh, we need to talk about. I'll put the cards up here first so you don't forget. And they often relate to the reading as well. Okay, like that. All right, no retrogrades or eclipses. No major aspects here. Uh, so that's a bit unusual. This is what we call a royal chart. There's some sort of independence on other people or relationships uh, your connections with other people become more important this month. There's a lot of energy around that because most of the planets are here on the western side of the chart. Okay, uh, I will talk about your ruler, Leo, here in your 8th house and ninth house. 8th house relates to intimacy and shared resources. It also relates to legalities like loans with banks uh, it can be your superannuation, it can mean inheritances uh, because the 8th house is very deep. Sometimes there's different aspects of death associated with the 8th house. Uh, and then the ninth house is like this um, broadening of your life, this expansion of your life. So you're going from the really, really deep energies, uh, which is scorpionic here in the 8th house, into the brighter lighter uh, and that's probably why the rainbow uh, came in too because it's like there has been sadness there has been tears the rain uh, it's like tears and then I saw the rainbow and and that fits beautifully here with the ninth house the house of the higher mind spirituality philosophy so you can see there's a lot of energy over on this side of the chart and it's all moving up towards the top of the chart and these planets here um, some of them anyway are going to move into the ninth house broadening your life uh, if you're in uh, if you're in the US uh, there's a weird little thing that's happening at the end of this month there's a black moon a black moon just simply means two new moons in the one calendar month and that's in the Western US uh, Pacific time and also mountain time but Boise Idaho when I check doesn't seem to get it so I don't understand what's happening there in in Boise <laughs> um, yeah let me know in the comments if you know why um, Boise doesn't get the new moon on the 31st it gets it on the 1st of April along with the rest of the world or most of the countries you know like Australia Europe Australia and New Zealand we get ours on the 1st of April April Fool's Day now let's have a look at this in depth a bit more uh, we've got a whole lot going on right at the beginning of the month basically from the end of February 27th of February to the 2nd or 3rd of March there's tons of stuff uh, related to Venus Mars and uh, your ruler the Sun and uh, so this means it could be very strong sexual feelings or romantic passions that erupt into your life. If you're not interested in that, <laughs> it can be transmuted into creativity and artistic uh, sort of energy. Maybe you want to redecorate your home or something like that. The other news uh, is that the first new moon of the month is here in your eighth house uh, bringing new beginnings okay so this is new beginnings around your finances that you've shared with somebody else like a, a, a jointly held asset um, is some kind of belonging that you have um, belongings that you have emotional attachments to 
and uh, you could be looking at a financial situation around uh, possessions and property, um, things that you're emotionally attached to. You need to look at those things objectively. Your emotions are very intense at the moment and uh, just watch that you don't overreact uh, to some encounter because there's lots of rumblings from deep, deep places here in your in your eighth house. Uh, with Mars conjuncting Mars, that's also going on. That makes you want to start a fresh, uh, start restart uh, afresh in life. You're likely to be feeling more independent. You want to take the initiative. Uh, there's quite a lot of power behind you at the moment, and you probably have more energy and willpower than. Uh, than usual and uh, it's a good time to channel your very intense energy into work uh, or exercise do watch for accidents anger and impatience okay because um, sometimes that goes with Mars conjuncts Mars Venus conjuncts Venus again very good for um, love and companionship and the affection even if you're not looking for a partner it just means warmth and affection for, uh, with other people basically something beautiful could start if you want to start a new relationship or um, it in it can actually strengthen friendships as well it's important to be surrounded by beauty and harmony now uh, Mercury also conjuncting Mercury gives you lots of ideas you're sharp and clear uh, you want to verbalize all of these ideas so you could be quite chatty uh, and um, it's a great time to make plans and strategize or maybe think about a course of study Sun conjunct Sun um, this makes you the center of attention you stand out you receive recognition and it's time to uh, appreciate who you are as a unique individual. Uh, you could be uh, filled with new energy, vitality and sense of purpose. And I want to say on that point, it was like something was limiting you or hindering you in the past. And that seems to have changed now so that now you feel you can move forward free without being hindered. Uh, sun sextiles Uranus also at this beginning of the month uh, you could be acting on impulse uh, changing your routine you're use, using your intuition more uh, the tempo of your life accelerates now so I've got chickens in the background and I hope that's not the goanna that comes to steal the eggs uh, rather <laughs> oh, I hope not um, it's a rather inconsistent and unpredictable time, uh, perhaps at the moment. Uh, we also have Mars conjuncting Pluto. It's time to get rid of the past uh, because a new cycle is beginning. And you could become rather obsessed about getting rid of things. Uh, you could want to act more sort of compulsively. You're not sure of why you're doing what you're doing but you do it anyway and that's the appropriate thing to do uh, do watch for power struggles with other people the fourth to the seventh brings mars opposition your ascendant uh, brings a possibility of conflicts over power and dominance uh, and um, it's not the time to really compromise yourself to please other people do watch for disputes in partnerships as, uh, in partnerships such as marriage or business and um, for some of you you may really want to be in a relationship with a special person now and you you go wholeheartedly and you boldly pursue them the 4th to the 14th of April sees the Mars in your 7th house here uh, and this is the house of partnerships and legalities. Uh, sometimes we call it the house of open enemies. These are just people that you don't uh, get on with basically. You don't see eye to eye. It's interesting isn't it how it starts off you know marriages then it's open enemies uh, uh, sorry then it's legalities and then it's open <laughs> open energy uh, for, uh, open enemies I should say I'll get it right yet anyway um, with Mars here it could be time uh, to try and compromise if you're in a, an important relationship try and overlook the differences you know we can always find differences with our partners whether they be business or 
or personal. Um, if you've got any ten tensions there simmering in the background, uh, do watch they don't boil over. Uh, but on the positive side, you could be more inclined to initiate contact with people that you want to make a connection with or begin a new relationship that could be very worthwhile. And you would be the more active partner, most probably. Fourth to the seventh sees Venus opposition, your ascendant. This is quite a positive time, especially in your relationships, such as, you know, um, with significant others, such as marriages, marriage partners. Uh, and it's like you want to be together with somebody to share loving feelings. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a, it's a positive time. And again, you could meet somebody who is very good for you. So that's come up a few times. Like uh, there's, there's a bit of a theme happening about meeting new people that uh, could be very beneficial in your life. So, yeah, do keep your eye open for that. 4th of March to the 5th of April, uh, Venus also in your 7th house, that adds to it, that adds even more energy, a very favourable time for meeting people, so I think that's like the 4th time I've said it, so it's, yeah, go for it is what I say. Pay attention to uh, your relationships and you will get more out of them. The 9th of March to the 26th of March, Mercury uh, moves into your 8th house here. Mercury's got a very busy month this month. It's um, it's it's moving around a bit from the seventh to the eighth to the ninth. So this means you're probably going to be quite active uh, and busy. And and while it's in the eighth house, there's a lot of communications and negotiations regarding joint finances, investments, uh, property, or anything else that you own in common with another person. Uh, it's time to take care of business and get these affairs in order. There could be some discussions around death, uh, both over the legalities, such as wills, inheritances, and so on, and the more emotional, personal aspects. 18th of March, there's a full moon in your third house here, uh, bringing a lot of communications uh, that are probably going to be... Um, imbued with your emotions and that's not a bad thing uh, it adds flavor if you like to your relationships there could also be um, events flashing in your mind from the past just bear in mind uh, that your emotions are carried with you from things that have happened from the past and um, may not directly apply to the situation at hand 19th of march to the 19th of april uh, the sun moves into your ninth house here and this means that it's time to lift yourself out of your normal mundane sort of life. Get a bigger picture on your life. Where do you want to go? Uh, what are the things you want to achieve in your life? It's time to seek new vistas and broader horizons. Maybe you're looking at traveling, studying or reading about foreign cultures. Uh, maybe you're looking at seeking people out who have more experience or insight or knowledge than you feel that you currently have. A teacher or a mentor can be particularly important right now. The 25th uh, to the 10th of April sees Mercury also moving into your ninth house here. It's a great time to plan a journey. Uh, take a trip to a distant land, uh, travel and exposure to new ideas, helps broaden your mind. Uh, you're starting to look at the world as a much bigger place that you can travel to perhaps. Maybe you learn more uh, from somebody from another culture or with vastly different beliefs and experiences than your own. There might be, you might be having a lot of spiritual conversations and, you know, philosophical um, discussions with people at the moment. And again, yeah, it's big picture thinking. 28th of March to the 31st of March, Mars conjuncts Mercury. Uh, just be careful here because you're probably not the most tactful. <laughs> so try and exercise a little bit of caution in what you say because you probably tend to be more straightforward than normal. And you're saying exactly what you think. Uh, and um, that's because your mind is very sharp and you pick up on lots of little nuances. So it is a good time to attack 
uh, intellectual type of work but yeah just be careful what you verbalize and finally on the 31st of March a new or a black moon depending on your location bringing new beginnings uh, here to your ninth house uh, and um, again the energy for a vacation or a getaway is quite strong also for study especially with uh, the um, full moon down here in your third house there's some sort of rumbling underneath and you may decide that you need to do something else to occupy your time okay so yes emotions don't try and do too much this this month remember this uh, sort of warning about fatigue and exhausting yourself okay so now i'm just going to close my eyes and see what i can see thankfully the the chooks have, be, uh, have uh, decided to lay their eggs and get on with it uh, and probably that's what we need to do uh, too is plant seeds and get on with it uh, as soon as you have a rest uh, then you can be looking actively to you know grow your life in some way all right now what do i see what are the pictures the, the sky is quite dark and then i'm seeing the moon and it's the crescent moon and it's in the uh, waxing stage so it's getting bigger but the weird thing about it is it's actually tilted um, on a funny strange angle that seems to be at the top of the picture uh, and so maybe that says to me uh, that your emotions are on display to the world because it's at the top of the picture so that would be like um, in the chart at the top of the chart which it is because it's going into the it'll be going into the ninth house the moon travels very fast you know around it only takes some um, i think it's 29 and a half days or not exactly around about that 29 and a half days go around the entire wheel uh, and so it's only spending on average two and a half days in each uh, sign so there's an opportunity that this presents but it's in a window the time frame is is not that big uh, and so it's enough to maybe get you um, to look at your feelings see how you feel I see somebody with a bow and arrow shooting an arrow and it's like hitting a bullseye but I also feel like Sagittarius which this the ninth house is um, uh, the house of uh, Sagittarius and I feel that very strong influence and it could be that a Sagittarius comes into your life and is very helpful to you in some way um, maybe they want to get you out of the house um, you know after you've had a rest uh, so you know you don't fall completely in a heap or maybe you need to fall completely in a heap so that when you get up uh, you are you know you're taking care of your fatigue okay I've got pain here in the right ear and down the right side of the jaw on the masculine side of my body uh, so it could be a masculine energy is involved and uh, I get the words loosening up something with your jaw uh, the TMJ temporomandibular joint um, needs work okay mm. masculine yeah maybe goes back to your father perhaps uh, your blood father okay anything else for you lovely Leo uh, just they're showing me a step and a door and it's like stepping over a threshold I feel like you're going through some sort of initiation and you're stepping over a threshold into another world okay and that's a good thing okay thank you so much for listening sorry about all the extraneous noise there in the background my gosh they really went to town didn't they <laughs> anyway uh, have a wonderful month everyone uh, if you are new please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell right now okay i'll see you again soon bye for now Thanks so much for watching. Please visit my website absolutesoulsecrets.com for all things spiritual. Have a lovely day.